Jaguar Automobile Troubleshooting. If you're looking for help fixing your Jaguar automobile, look no further. Our comprehensive Jaguar Automobile Troubleshooting Guide will explain common issues, provide tips, and show you how to read your model's error codes. Fix poor acceleration. Your car's computer relies on the mass airflow sensor MAF to detect the volume, mass, and temperature of the air entering your engine. It then calculates the proper amount of fuel to add. However, if the sensing elements inside the MAF are dirty, the computer gets skewed readings and miscalculates how much fuel to add. And that causes performance issues. Most MAF sensors can be restored to full operating conditions with a simple cleaning. To clean your MAF sensor, buy a can of MAF sensor cleaner from any auto parts store. Remove the sensor from the air duct by loosening the worm drive clamps with a screwdriver or socket. Then aim the spray cleaner directly at the sensing elements inside the MAF housing. Soak the sensing elements but don't touch them with your fingers. Rag. Or brush. They'll break. Let the solvent dry. Then reinstall the MAF. If a dirty sensor was causing your acceleration problem, the cleaning should put you back in the groove. If not, get it checked out by a pro. Fix a tire pressure sensor warning light. Driving with extremely low tire pressure is one of the most common car problems and driving on low tire pressure can put you and your family at risk. That's why all newer vehicles include a tire pressure monitoring system TPMS. If you fill your tires to the pressure listed on the label near the driver's door pillar but the light doesn't turn off. Here's how to fix the problem. Drive your car at varying speeds for up to 10 miles to make the light turn off. If the light is still lit, double check the spare tire's pressure. Spare tires usually require a much higher inflation pressure. If it's low, your TPMS light will never turn off. Fix a slow moving power window. A sticky, slow moving power window can be really frustrating, especially at a toll booth or drive through window. You can usually fix the problem by lubricating the window channels. But if you don't fix the problem, the slow moving window will stress the window regulator mechanism until it breaks, costing you around $400 to replace. Here's the fix. Buy an aerosol can of dry Teflon spray. It sprays on as a liquid but dries to a white slippery Teflon powder. Shake the can vigorously to mix the Teflon particles with the solvent. Insert the straw into the nozzle and aim the spray into the window channels. Press the trigger and soak the front and rear channels until the spray runs down into the door. Wait a few minutes for the solvent to evaporate. Then operate the window up and down several times to spread the dry Teflon spray through the channels. Fix a squealing belt. Of all the car problems you might encounter, a squealing belt is probably the most annoying. The high-pitched squeal is produced when the rubber belt loses its grip and slips around the pulleys. In rare cases, a worn slow-moving alternator, pump, or AC compressor bearing or component misalignment can cause a perfectly good belt to squeal. But in most cases, the belt slips because it's worn, is loose, or has been contaminated with oil or coolant. You can diagnose all those problems yourself with a visual inspection, a belt wear gauge, and a spray water bottle. First, check the belt for wear using a belt wear gauge. If the belt is worn, replace it. Next, try to recreate the conditions when the belt squeals first thing in the morning when the engine is cold. When you accelerate, etc., start the engine and spray a stream of water on the ribbed side of the belt before it wraps around each pulley. If the noise disappears but comes back in a few minutes, the belt or the components it drives are misaligned. That's not something you can fix on your own. Take it to a shop. Fix a sticking car door. In hot weather, the sponge rubber weather stripping on the door can stick to the door frame, making it hard to open. Start by cleaning weather strip residue off the door frame with a household spray cleaner. Then coat the weather strip with silicone or dry Teflon lube. Spray the lubricant onto a rag and wipe it with the foam weather stripping, making sure you wet the entire surface. Let the solvent dry and your sticking door problems will be gone. Fix a sticking hood latch. Hood latches are pretty simple mechanisms. But they're constantly exposed to water, salt, and road grit. And that can make them gum up. Rust and stick. Sometimes the problem is so bad you can't even pop the hood. Here's how to fix a sticking hood latch. Buy a can of aerosol rust penetrant and a can of spray white lithium grease. Start by soaking the latch mechanism with the rust penetrant. If you can't open the hood at all, slide the spray straw into the grill and aim it up toward the latch. Then shoot about a half can of lube onto the latch. Let it soak for an hour. If it opens after that, 
move on to the next step. If not, repeat the procedure once the hood opens. Soak the hood latch mechanism with white lithium grease. Then close and open the hood multiple times until the latch works smoothly. Apply fresh grease every year before winter. Fix a paint chip. Every car gets paint chips from flying gravel. If you ignore the chips, the metal will rust and blister and you'll wind up with major rust problems that cost a small fortune to fix. Avoid those problems by filling paint chips with touch-up paint before they start to rust. You'll need to touch up paint from the dealer or an auto parts store. Wax and grease remover. And a rag. Clean the chipped area with wax and grease remover. Then dab on a small dot of touch-up paint. The paint won't match exactly. But it'll look a heck of a lot better than rust. Wait the recommended time before applying a second coat. Wait 30 days for the paint to cure. Then wax the area. Sourcefamilyhandyman.com